Welcome to Listening to Pain Tribe with Mike and Dan, a podcast about the art and hobby of miniature painting. I'm Mike. And I'm Dan. Thank you for joining us on our journey to be better, braver, and happier painters. So normally, I would just say, hey, this is what our next subject is, but we're going to make things a little different today. We have listener email to read. I know. Unbelievable, right? (laughs) Yeah, let's sound a little bit more happy about that, Mike. Jeez. So, Mike, will you read our first email in your velvety voice? Absolutely. And this email is from Painting Dog on the Reaper forums. Well, at least that's what she wants to go by. Just wanted to let you know how happy I am to have found your podcast. Podcasts make my commute more pleasant, and I've been wishing for a painting podcast for a long time. I'm only on your second full episode, so apologies. I'm chiming in on something that's old news, but you mentioned a great brush care tip about spinning the brushes when forming the tip and the brush soap and conditioner, so I thought I'd share a trick that I learned years ago about setting a tip. I no longer remember where I learned it. After cleaning your brush, run a brush through conditioner while it's still damp, then give it a hard flick like you're cracking a whip. The bristles snap together in a neat little point. This doesn't work so well for smaller brushes like a 3 aught 0 and aught and under brush sizes, but on the size zero and up brushes, it's near magic. Keep up the good work, Painting Dog from Reaper Forms. So thank you so much for sharing that tip, Reaper Dog. We really, really appreciate it. Um, that is a great tip. And one of the cool things, too, is that actually if you take a brush loaded with water and tap it three to four times on your water jar, it will also form a tip, too. You know what? If anybody else would like to send us an email and become internet famous by us reading your email on the on the podcast, you can send us one at listening to paint dry at gmail.com. Well, now that all the fun stuff is over, let's head back to the plague world of COVID-19. So recently, or actually for the last couple of weeks, I've been strolling through Facebook and I noticed that a few people have been asking for advice about teaching their kids or showing their kids painting Warhammer figures. And I think this is really, really cool because it's, you know, it's a great way to, to get new new people involved it definitely i am a firm believer in the arts and how it can help you in all the other areas of your life now i feel i should put a joke in here that i'm surprised by the number of gamers that actually have kids then again my wife tells me every day she's surprised that i have kids so today we're going to meander our way through how to teach little kids how to paint so mike how do we want to kick this thing off well, maybe, you know, talk a little bit about personal experience. Like, my kids go through phases with it. Like, my little one, if I set up a painting station, a painting area, and pop out some miniatures that are dogs, she'll paint with me all day long because she loves painting dogs. But my 13-year-old girl, she will not be constrained by three-dimensional figures. She must have a canvas or something to paint on. <laughs> oh. And my, my 16-year-old, he, he's interested kind of in playing the games, but not really interested in painting. Takes too long, kind of bores him. He'd rather do stuff on a computer like graphic design. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. Well, I, you know, I still got the 11-year-old. She'll paint with me some time, from time to time. <laughs> there you go. What about you? My kids really don't enjoy the gaming aspect or the painting aspect of this hobby. Uh, So that leads me to, is it really something that we should have our kids do? It's always fun to be able to share a hobby with your kids and your family, but it doesn't always work. I have tried to give my son and daughter figures. They just look at them. They put them on the dresser or something or on some shelf somewhere. And that's about it. Now, they still are artistic. My son does enjoy Gundams when he does get one. And my daughter does a lot of 2D drawing and painting also. Um, I don't feel like I'm missing out on that because I do enjoy watching them do that. And they totally get that from the mom, not from me. But I couldn't be able, I personally wouldn't be able to teach my kids how to paint because I not a teacher and um i wouldn't even know where to begin some of this apprehension is from back in the 1990s when i used to manage a games workshop so we had a customer who was a teacher who was a a pretty active player and painter in our area and he really um he, he approached me one day about being able to teach some classes and i was like well you know it wasn't part of the policy at that time. We didn't have the school program that they have now or the 
I'm not sure what they're really call it right now. Uh, I was able to contact headquarters and they sent me a bunch of boxes of painting supplies and starter figures so that we could do, do this at the school. Going into this, I was teaching it as I would have taught uh, an adult coming in. So uh, needless to say, I did, my expectations were totally different from the kids' expectations. There was a large mess. Uh, everybody's figures were pretty much brown because they mixed all their paints and colors together. And I kind of like ran out of there and said, have fun cleaning up. I'm punching out. Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so, was there uh, a silhouette of you in the door? <laughs> nope. It, yep. He was still, he was still there because I was already out the door. So that was a pretty <laughs> frightening experience. Uh, it was cool that the next uh, next week or two, the gentleman came back and he was like, hey, the kids had a really good time. And I could not wrap my head around it because I was not having fun. My expectations were not met. I didn't think the kids' expectations were met. And it's because, you know, they're younger and I was older and it just wasn't driving for me. Then again, you know, I was, you know, in my 20s. You know, I, I'm all about, you know, putting little figures together and blowing things up and driving fast cars and all that stuff that you do at that age. It was quite an experience and it kind of scarred me a little bit because I didn't want to teach kids anymore. And so I'm not going to teach kids anymore. So I just leave it to the experts. They can teach the kids on how to paint. But it doesn't mean that it's not a good thing. Uh, I think it's really cool and I know the parents are extremely happy when their kids paint their first figures. And that's pretty, and I see that not from the, the old manager standpoint, but just someone who's in a hobby and seeing that there's young families out there that are enjoying something together. And I think that's pretty cool. So keep that up, parents that, uh, that have kids and want to uh, share that experience with them. Because not like you're going to go anywhere. <laughs> Because we're all right. stuck on a plague world. <laughs> it sucks. Nur Nurgle is very happy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think one of the things that's important too, Dan, is that you don't have to, the kids don't have to paint with you. They can do the other art with you. Like, I, I love it when I'm, when I'm painting and they sit down, uh, fold paper, craft monsters, or paint, or color, or do something else. As long, you know, that's still family time. It's still art. It's still time spent together so it, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be everybody's painting orcs today you know yeah <laughs> or you know going for artistic diorama stuff now we'll say this though part of my wife's uh, genius homeschooling plan is she's making everybody read specific books and so my 16 year old son has to read of mice and men 13 year old daughter has to read um, to kill a mockingbird and my 11-year-old is reading a book called The Mysterious Benedict Society. Right as this kind of crisis started, she went out and bought a crap ton of peeps. And so now she is making them as her final project for these books do peep dioramas based on their books, which is freaking awesome. So we're going to get like of peeps and men and to kill a mocking peep and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> dioramas. <laughs> Better so. your home than mine because we all hate peeps here. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have to my... eat them. You don't have to eat them. You're not, you're not supposed to. It's a diorama. It's just like a gingerbread house. Who the hell eats a gingerbread house? Right? Oh, I, I eat gingerbread house. That's not for decoration. That's for eating. Peeps? A gingerbread, now, a gingerbread those, house? Now, those peeps are going to be worth <laughs> a lot of money here in the next couple of months when we run out of food, and that's the only thing that's left. <laughs> right. And, then, you know, they'll be a little stale. So what you do, the, the simplest solution is put them on a skewer, put them over a fire, and roast them. So that way you have kind of like a, a peep brulee. You get a little caramelized sugar and a melty uh, marshmallow on the inside. Mm -hmm. I don't like the I, I don't like them, but uh, I don't like peeps to begin with. But that sounds neither, good to me. Neither do I. <laughs> neither do anybody in my family. So that's why we will starve to death because we don't have a box of peeps to sustain us for a while. Dude, <laughs> we don't have a box of peeps. We have yep. like thirteen or fourteen boxes of peeps. My wife went all out. People, people are hoarding toilet paper. We're hoarding peeps, apparently. You know. <laughs> uh, good. Yeah, you know, everybody's got to have a hobby, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, 
you had that scarring incident of teaching kids in the past. Have you thought about like kind of, ch- I, I don't know, I guess, you know, that, that, that seems like a bad experience, but as an, later on and in hindsight now, you can kind of see where you could have kind of changed the nature of the way you taught, et cetera. And so that seeing those things ahead of you, that doesn't give you at least a little bit of, Hey, you know, I, I know how I would do it now. I could do it better, et cetera. And you're just kind of like, uh, F that I'm done. <laughs> uh, I was pretty, well, it wasn't really that, um, I would teach kids if they had questions, but I, I think I would have a different approach. I don't have one on top of my head right now, but like I said, neither one of my children, uh, want really to, to do it. It's just not their thing. Uh, you know, my kids have their own hobbies. They have their own creative outlets and I would rather allow them to flourish in those than Mm -hmm. to, to work on my thing. I allow my kids to, to try things out. If they, if they want to give something a try, of course we want them to give it a try and it might be something they're good at or something they enjoy as something that, you know, we do as parents. This was not theirs. They, this just isn't part of what they enjoy. I really don't think about it a whole lot. You know, I might joke around a little bit about it and I might look at my stuff, but they're like, yeah, whatever, because they win awards. I don't. So they can keep their arts and uh, do better than I can because they're excelling and I'm still just average. I know that feeling. I can, I can certainly relate to that that part of it for sure. You know, <laughs> that, that average, but maybe that's what the, the podcast would be called. The Average Painter's Hour <laughs> for the two of us. Hello, Average Painter's Hour on my end. Yeah, you're a little hard on yourself there. but uh, uh, Yeah, well, aren't we all? Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we, we certainly are much, you know, I, I go through a phase where I'm very insecure about, about the painting and then I think I'm better than I am and then I'm insecure. Then, you know, it's just a, the roller coaster of stupidity that, that is me. So one of the things that I, I've noticed though is that art is such a valuable thing with kids. I, I, I know my kids don't paint and stuff, but they, we still talk a lot about colors. We talk about, you know, like whenever we see something cool or like, you know, one of the big, big topic of discussions always is my son uh, got a subscription to National Geographic because he loves the photography. And that's actually, he's really big into photography. I bet he does like that photography. He cannot take a damn picture <laughs> of my miniatures for me, but you know, he can take a p- other type of pictures. Yeah, I know where you were going, but it's not really that way anymore. <laughs> it's not as, it's not as the, <laughs> I'm just not even gonna go there. Sorry. I'm not even go there. Okay. And we're gonna leave. We're gonna we're gonna leave uh, there are this bang bang pictures. part of the conversation out of what? it. What? <laughs> there are beautiful pictures. They are absolutely. Actually, one of the the last one that came in was an. I don't know how you would say it, but the front cover did this whole like how we screwed up. We're all gonna die in seventy years, and then if you turn the magazine over. Um, it's the opposite, how we saved the planet within 70 years. And it kind of both ways reads the, the photography and the imagery. It's just absolutely breathtaking in it. And, you know, we can have a great conversation about color and light and shapes and things along those lines. And so, you know, it, as long as kids are in, in, into art, I'm, I'm good because it's an important aspect, you know, whether, and it doesn't have to be visual. It could be, you know, my littlest one plays the cello. My oldest one is trying to learn how to play the guitar. So, you know. It's all oral sorts of fun, and my middle child's big into theater, so that's another form of art. So it's a, it's a good thing, you know, that as long as kids are involved and active and they feel like they've got success, I'm not going to change my kids. They, you know, my, like I said, my 11 year old will paint dogs with me till the cows come home because that's what she's kind of obsessed with. But, you know, otherwise, the other two look at me like, like no, we're not painting with you. Bye. <laughs> Pretty much how um, my kids are. But yeah, don't for, yeah, definitely don't. You don't want to force kids, you know, and I think I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I think the approach that Joe White has in the interview for this episode is absolutely on the money. So, well, I'll leave it at that because I don't want to spoil it. So, Dan, tell me what's on your desk. Have you bought anything new? Did you take advantage of any of the Adepticant sales? Well, no, I didn't. Um, I just, I, I, no, nope. um, give me a second. I'm having a brain freeze. Take, take your time. 
Well, no, I hadn't actually purchased anything recently. I have such a backlog of things, and I've actually had some time to sit and concentrate on some of my paintings. So that's one of the things I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get rid of some of my gray. I'm trying to get rid of, um, not really get rid of, but to paint up some of my figures and um, get some of my armies uh, up to tabletop standard. So I've really been working on that a lot. Now I have an awful lot of stuff um that i've been working on like sisters of battle 40k dark angels 30k dark angels oh geez what else do i have i got some thunder warriors i'm going to start working on here pretty soon i got my 3d printing going on so uh i really don't need to go out and purchase anything i know some of my paints are getting kind of low but um i think once um once I get a good inventory of those, I'm going to make a big purchase from one of my local stores and um, go pick those things up because uh, it's a little bit more difficult. I can't just like run over like we want to because we're under the uh, stay at home order. So um, we, the, they've been fairly flexible on allowing people to purchase things and they just let us come and pick them up. So, so no, um, not really purchased anything lately um how about you have you purchased anything lately i have actually um uh, okay i uh, hello yeah i have actually i purchased uh i took advantage of the adapt the can't sales um i there was a company that was running 30 percent off of uh miniatures called tomb guardians and i bought one of those and then i did this free spinner thing and i want a free miniature so i got two miniatures for that uh i, I thought that was pretty cool they actually came in today it was a little uh, dwarven mage and a vampire queen so 28 millimeters sculpted by jason weeby uh so they're pretty nice you know i'm familiar with weeby's work because he does a lot of work for reaper as well so oh, that's pretty cool you know but uh, i also Ventured into two different worlds of paints. I, after our, uh, our next, uh, after our episode for Creature Caster, Jason Craze, I decided to take advantage of the sale that they were having and got a couple of their Pro Acryl paints and a replacement for my Bombwick one, or an addition of Bombwick ones. And then I also purchased, uh, from Michigan Toy Soldier some of the Aking Interactive third generation paints. Those were on a great deal. They had 20% off. And then there was 10% off preferred customer and another 10% off because it was a pre-order. So they're 40% off. It was $3 a bottle. So it was a great price. Uh, I'm glad I took advantage of that. Oh, you definitely and the last, oh. Go ahead. No, go, no, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. You go, you go ahead. Oh, were you going to say, like, I definitely have to do a review with them or something? Yes, exactly. that's exactly what I was going to say. But you can cut my okay, part. Go ahead. Be, be, no, Go ahead you, and say no. You, you you say it. I can work it back towards okay. it. Well, you definitely need to make. Uh, well, you definitely need to do a review of those products. That sounds pretty cool, and I'm definitely interested in the uh, pro kills. Bah, pro acryl. Ah, fuck this stupid thing. Must be getting late. Um, <laughs> yeah, you definitely need to do a review of those. Paints. <coughs> I'm kind of curious on. Uh, you definitely have to do a review of those paints. Period. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll do, I'll do a review of all that stuff. And I also, um, decided that I was going to try the massive voodoo Mr. Lee's, uh, astronaut challenge that they have going on. So I got, I ordered those as well. Uh, astronaut, there are three mini astronaut figures that come in the pack and you're supposed to make a diorama. They did it last year for Marie LeFeur and I never got a chance to finish it, but. Um, it turned out to be one of the better pieces I've ever done with two of them. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with those, uh, astronauts and seeing how no. big they are, et cetera. No, that's Have you seen, did, did you see that con contest that they're putting out? Nope. I didn't. Yeah. Well, so that's kind of what's that, you know, otherwise I am still in the uh, process. I am a little late in finishing my massive prep. Uh, I am. Almost there. I kept, I keep w w getting wishy washy with the base for the 75 millimeter on a Bagatia figure from that planet. Um, this <laughs> and everything borderlines into diorama. And I'm like, no, this is a diorama now. Damn it. I got to pull it back. Um, and so 
you know, I think I finally got something in my head now and I'll be able to finish that base up pretty soon. And then my Stormcast Eternals are 90% ready to be primed. I just have to finish putting the last two together because I did some, I have to let them cure because I did some conversions on them. Uh, just within the kit, not with, not like kit bashing outside or independent sculpting. I just decided to move some things around on them. So thought to, to make them a little bit more interesting, but otherwise that, that's kind of what's on my desk. Uh, I'm all lined up now. Um, <clears throat> the end is in sight. I'm hoping by the beginning of the middle of next week that I'll be ready to start laying down all sorts of paint on miniatures. Well, I have been painting a lot, so there are a couple things on my desk. I just haven't purchased a whole lot of new stuff. Uh, I'm working on the Dark Apostle, that one that I bought like the first day it came out. I'm finally uh, closing up on that one. Uh, the modifications are completed. Uh, I was able to, to get a good paint job down that I'm comfortable with, and uh, it looks pretty cool so far, so I'll hopefully have it by, done by this weekend and then I can, uh, I don't know what else. I'm going to paint something else. I'm not quite sure. Oh, that's right. I got all these. You should post some pictures of that Dan on the Instagram page. Yeah, no, I will. I definitely will. Uh, this, yeah. I think this might be my, my best painting. So, um, I'm pretty awesome. excited about it. Uh, and where can people find that Instagram page? Uh, listening to paint dry on Instagram and on Facebook. <laughs> oh, so you going to be on Facebook too? Okay. Yeah. We're already on Facebook, dude. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, <laughs> let's see. So way, way I, to pay attention there. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. I have these, uh, masters of war or something like that, or chapter masters. Uh, it's a four pack of uh, Space Marine guys that uh, I've had for a while. So I've been painting some of those up and uh, I stumbled upon a really awesome recipe for red that uh, I used and I followed the video since I normally don't and it came out pretty darn cool and I was very excited about it. And um, I'm going to try to do some more uh, painting red now that I have this cool recipe and I can use that for uh, capes and cloaks and stuff. <laughs> and, um, I have, I, well, I, I had to do a refresh, so I um, canceled. I know. Uh, actually, you know what? We're not going to talk about that. So just don't even worry about that. The refresh thing. Yeah. Yep. What is that? Um, <laughs> so I I canceled all of my uh, Patreon accounts. Oh, okay. Okay. Had, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had like five of them. So I canceled all of them, and I'm working on. I just got one now, and I will probably have another two. Uh, but this guy is. Um, Did you keep Titan Forge? Nope. No, I didn't. Did you? But did I you down download any but more? I, stuff? I downloaded all their stuff that I could download. I was just they were doing like weird like zombie <clears throat> western or something this month, and I'm like. <clears throat> It's like, no, I really don't want that. So I was like, I'm not going to waste the money on that. So I got this new yeah. guy, and uh, his stuff's pretty cool. So I'm going to start following his recipes because it it, it helps me where I'm having problems. So I'm going to go through a couple of classes or a couple of his videos, and then um, he's going to look at some of my stuff and give me some pointers. And then I'm Who gonna, is this? Uh, NR, NRM paint. Okay. He's a Danish dude. Um, he's got, uh, yeah, he does some really just fantastic stuff. I really like his colors and stuff. That's that the Marco Frisco guy, is it? I don't think so. NJM, not just Mecca? No, 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 no. That's not him at all. No. Okay. No, this but is you know who I'm talking about, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, this is a Danish guy. And um, he's got some pretty cool stuff. So he sent me an email earlier. And uh, so I'm going to send him some pictures of my stuff. And then I get to find a topic. So I haven't figured out if I want to do my Dark Angels or my Terminators. Or if I want to do uh, non-metal metallic. Because he does his non-metal metallics with three colors. 
So actually, most of his paintings are like three colors. He mixes everything. So I'm like, holy oh, wow. shit. But his stuff is really freaking awesome. So mm-hmm. I have to watch some of his basic videos to figure out how he does stuff. And then I'm going to ask him more specific questions about things. Mm-hmm. So, but um, yeah, so I'm just trying to start fresh and go with that. And then we'll see where that takes me. Oh, you know what's really cool, too? And I don't know if other, anybody else has noticed this, too. You know, we, we talked a little bit about in the, the episode about social media. But there are a lot of really good artists that are putting out a ton of free content on YouTube. Like Sergio Calvo has a whole series of painting with uh, with a woman named Vanessa. I wonder if that's his wife. Um, but he also has like basics NMM, et cetera, things like a two hour long NMM, NMM video where you paint, you paint along with them, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And Trevarian has all that free content, like the master class for the Ogroid. Um, yeah, my, my or whatever. So those, those are things besides just listening to us, which you should listen to us always. Um, there's some videos, a ton of free content out there from people that normally just do stuff behind the paywall. So, yeah, um, exactly. Well, that's how I stumbled upon this guy. Uh, he was like, he had like one video about something. I was like, damn, that looks pretty cool. And it's like, well, let me look at the video. I was like, holy crap, that kind of works pretty good. So I was like, ah. It's like he's, you know, fairly inexpensive, and I'm going to give this a try and see how this one works. I've tried many other times, and it's always been a big failure because just, you know, meeting times and stuff like that. Now I could probably get one-on-one. It'd probably be a lot easier now because I'm stuck in this house until June and July. But, um, right. You know. Yeah. I'm wondering even, even if we're looking at conventions happening in September. Like, are they going to have time to prepare? But I guess that's another whole other issue. With that's yourself. a whole other thing, yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, I'm not getting a warm fuzzy. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. We really don't. I just don't know yeah. how. I just, yeah. Even if everything was to be perfect tomorrow, they would still have long-term effects. So, the world we live Indeed. in. Indeed. Yep, it is the world we live in now. All right. So let's see. What else? I don't know. You have anything else going on? Not right now. No, I'm not doing any Patreons. Uh, I'm just trying to prep. You know, watching videos as they come up and uh, listening. I have. I, I I will get back to painting uh, very soon. I just need to. I want to get all this in front of me and not worry about anything else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, this way, actually, what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to take everything I'm not working on and kind of lock it away. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> put it away. I, I put so it So I can't I, see it. I don't see it. I don't. And then one day I'll be like, Hey, I need something. And I go digging around. I'm like, Holy crap. Look at this stuff. I totally forgot. I had this I'm like, Oh, I need to paint this. I need to do this. And then it starts. To, so that's what, that's where I'm at right now. This thing is starting right. to expand. So my desk was clean three weeks ago had, you know, one item I was working on, and that's it. Now I have five projects. I have boxes of shit all over the place. I'm like, I gotta stop. I gotta refresh. So I'll be doing that this weekend. So, like, like while I'm monitoring and working, I can um like put my 30k guys together. So that's what I was doing today. I just worked on the legs, cleaned them up. There wasn't a whole lot of cleaning that made me do. So they made a really good. Those are really good molds, man, because they didn't have lines, very few lines at all. It was awesome. It took me probably 45 minutes to clip them and paint them all, or not paint them, to uh, glue them together. So those are pretty good ones. So I have to do the backpacks, and I'll do the chest paints tomorrow, and then um, then I'll start to slog through the uh, arms and shit like that, because I really hate those. Right. Well, especially on those, and you run the risk with the glue and stuff. Like sometimes super glue and resin aren't happy with each other, so you have to wet it or if it wet wet one side of the resin. Oh, these are these are the plastic ones. Oh, is it the Battle of Calf ones? <laughs> yeah. So I have the Calf okay. ones, and then I have the uh, or Betrayal at Calf, Betrayal at Calf. The Betrayal, and then I have the <clears throat> Phosphorus Burns. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, that actually. Uh, the Betrayal of Calth is the last, last box set I bought. Ah, okay. 
Now, I normally yeah. buy the big box sets, but the last like two years I haven't really purchased any except for the sisters. I didn't really like. I just didn't like them. I mean, yeah, I could go and get some more uh, Space Wolves, but I'm anti-Space Wolf, so... I, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> got, like, you're a Dark Angels player. You're got, not allowed like, to buy Space, Ang- uh, 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 Space Wolves. I have probably about 50 of those stupid guys. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to buy any more sets of them. I don't need any more sets of them. So I'm like... See, that's you got to take those to the hobby swaps when they happen again. Yeah, I know, but someday them. I'm going to be like, hey, that was a cool paint scheme. I'm going to try to do these. Oh, darn it, I sold them all. Just like my freaking Tyranids. Makes me so angry that I sold all my freaking Tyranids. <laughs> you got rid of bugs. It's okay. You'll be fine. Nah. <laughs> That's like my second army, man. I love those things. I had so much fun with that. That army was a lot of fun to play. And I just piecemealed it out because I wasn't doing anything with it. And then I was like, sucks, man. I can't believe it just did that. Got rid of all my shit. So <laughs> we got to start building that crap up again. Well, at least now that the models are much better. When they release a new Tyranid model, which I have a feeling that we're going to start seeing some new space bugs soon. Because they yeah. haven't touched them in a while. Yeah, well, it only took them 27 years to get to the sisters, so... <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. Years. Or is it thirty something years? Yeah. So I don't even know. I, I don't know what to expect. Uh, I'm yeah. sure. No, I get it. Probably more space marines. <laughs> <laughs> new versions. A new uh, yeah, prim- new, Primaris. Yep, new Primaris Lieutenant. No, I'm just waiting for a new chamber to be opened for the Stormcast. That's what I'm waiting for. Because I love the Stormcast models. Let's head to the newsroom with Joe White from Smooth Blend Studio on how to teach our kids how to paint. All right. So we have Joe White from Smooth Blend Studio in with us today. And we're going to talk about uh, something that we're probably all can uh, relate to if we have children around. So, um, hey, Joe, why don't you give us a quick history of how you got into the hobby? And then we'll ask some more questions. Right on. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Um, I got into the hobby, um, tabletop gaming and painting, um, just about five years ago. Uh, I was in a uh, cycling uh, accident, and so that kind of took me out of commission for a while. And I got into, uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan, and I found the game Imperial Assault. And uh, so I, I picked that up, and I found some YouTube videos, like step by step. Uh, tutorials on how to paint it. So I started, you know, uh, just painting Star Wars uh, models. Kind of, kind of got into uh, Age of Sigmar after that, and just kind of, kind of evolved from there. And uh, you know, paint a lot more than I play, which uh, a lot of us do. But uh, as of about two years ago, I've been uh, kind of either a full time commission painter or full-time hobbyist it kind of goes back and forth and, uh, so uh and then uh here recently in the last year or so i started doing some painting uh teaching some painting classes excellent so i know that we ran into each other about two years ago two yeah. and a half years ago with uh, at a uh, pre-painting um uh seminar with roman and um, that's where we ran into each other. Yeah. And that's when uh, I think you were full bore into the into the whole wake, jumping in with both feet. And, oh and yeah. Commission painting and and painting when I have time to do it, and that and that's kind of where we all started and everything. So one of the things that um, that we we continually talk about over the years is kids and getting people started uh when we go to conventions there's typically a lot of uh advanced or intermediate classes that you can take but there's a time when you know where new people are coming on board and there are bring it might be bringing their friends or family and they have no idea how to do things yeah. or how to, how to really start because you know we don't we're not all great teachers so um uh, you were asked to um, to help out with Nova Open, uh, I think last year, or the year before, and teach 
um, beginner a beginner class because we really didn't have that at Nova Open, and I think that started to expand a little bit more into kids. Is it, tell me how that uh, kind of like started. Yeah, yeah, I was contacted to uh, to think about to consider doing an absolute beginners class. Um, there had there there was a need that was uh, recognized that um, a lot of people were signing up for classes at conventions and, and particularly at Nova, at the Nova Open. And, there, you know, people were going into these classes and they were just, you know, a step or a half step behind, like uh, the uh, um, uh, the skill level kind of needed mm-hmm. to get the most out of a class. And uh, so I said, yeah, I'd love to, uh, um, to teach a class. I, I figured, you know, I, I have at least those skills to, to teach an absolute <laughs> beginner. And uh, so did that. And when I was writing up the, or, you know, kind of uh, polishing up the um, synopsis of the class, I, I emailed that off um, and I said, hey, what about um, the possibility of teaching a beginner's class for children? Um, I have a kind of background in teaching elementary age kids for the uh, last 14, 15 years at the time. And uh, I'm like, I, I like teaching kids. I kind of, I, you know, I don't know. I guess I can relate to them. Um, I just, I don't know. I enjoy seeing the excitement of kids learning. And uh, the the people at Nova just lo- love that uh, to go alongside their kids hammer event for sure so uh yeah we set up a, a class and just came up with a, a fun curriculum and not only uh, offering it for the kids hammer participants uh i had two uh we had yeah two other classes that were sold out for the the kids painting events kids and their parents uh i, I think i think all the kids that were there at least one parent was also there um partaking and participating in the class as well Cool. So we find ourselves in uh, now it's April of 2020, uh, you know, when someone's going back into the Internet files and finds this in a couple decades. And uh, the world event is people staying at home. So we have the coronavirus, which is all over the place. And we do have Internet connectivity and. We peruse uh, Facebook when we try to, you know, just to see what's out there and what cool figures people are painting and what kind of stuff they're actually doing because, we you know, we all belong to these same groups. But I've noticed that it recently that um, a lot of parents um, are saying, I want to teach my kids Warhammer. And they're, not, they're asking for advice. So now that we're, you know, smack dab in the middle of this thing, and people are starting to come up with new things to do for their kids. Yeah. Uh, we want to kind of get your feelings and get some of your advice for teaching kids, because we know it's different than teaching adults how to paint. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, you do have to go about it um, differently. Any, if, if you ever take any kind of class or seminar on how to teach uh, or giving instruction or a lecture or anything one of the first things they'll tell you is you, you have to know your audience and uh yeah so you have to teach to your audience so with kids some of the key to, i'll just kind of point out a couple of key things that i have found uh is drastically or, or quite a bit different than teaching adults um the first one and this goes with you know kind of teaching a kid a sport or painting or anything is let them just try it first. Just, you know, I would say give them a model, give, you know, whether a space marine or an orc or a bones model, give them four colors, you know, uh, which will go into my next point and just let them paint it with, you know, you can give them a little instruction, moisten your brush, you know, put a little bit of paint on it and then go. And guess what? That's it's not going to be a masterpiece, a, you know, a true display masterpiece, but it's going to be theirs. Um, kids don't own anything. Uh, I always tell my teachers, learn their names, learn children's names because it's the only thing they own. But now they're going to have something they've created. So do that. Just give them a model and, and let them have at it. Uh, one of the, the things about only giving them like four colors is. Uh, and this, we have this problem as adults. We get, uh, um, 
paralyzed by all the choices uh, that we have. I'm, I'm looking at my paints and I just <laughs> downsized my paints by about 230 bottles. And I have 115 bottles of paint, which, I mean, that, yeah. And that's probably small in comparison to, to some people. And we have, I was going to say, that's all you got. Come yeah, on. That's, that's, that's it. And, I just uh, ordered more paints for AK Interactive and Creature Caster. I don't, I don't, I've gone probably 10 days without ordering. Uh, I take that back. I've been almost 10 days. <laughs> it's, it's a sign on the wall that says X amount of days since last order came. That's right. That's right. But no, with kids, just give them a few choices. You know, give them one color of blue. They don't need, you know, the, the whole range, you know, 15 uh, hues of blue. Give them a blue. Give them a red. Give them the primary colors. Let them do a little bit of mixing, and then they'll definitely have their browns. And uh, uh, you can do that. Uh, the first time I, when I was preparing for the uh, Nova kid, the young hobbyist uh, class is what we call it. Uh, my uh, my massage therapist, mine and my wife's massage therapist, comes over once a month, and I said, "Hey, bring your kids." She has two young boys, elementary age kids. I said, "Bring your boys next time." I said, uh, "I, I got a, a little experiment I need to do on them." <laughs> so, so I got a couple of. Uh, just old D&D models, just some some metal uh, orcs. And uh, I said, okay, we're going to paint these. And I, I was using uh, Citadel contrast paints so that I could like the only artsy kind of terminology that I used was just told them about what contrast means. And just it, it's a change, you know, uh, from, you know, in this case, a dark area to a light area, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's like, that's the only concept I wanted to, to t- really teach them. And so I was like going over and, and I'm like, OK, I would put, you know, three drops of I'm looking at actually the model that I painted with them. I put three mm-hmm. drops of like uh, snake bite leather on their little palette for each of them. And I'm like, OK, we're going to paint, you know, this leather part, you know, this like cloak part he had. So and I'm thinking, OK. It's going to take them. I'm trying to figure out the time. Okay, it's going to take them like four minutes to do that. And these are like nine-year-old boys. It's like 30 seconds later, they're done. And I'm like, okay, is that wrong? I'm like, no, they're fearless, <laughs> which is cool. And it just so so goes with the uh, the concept and mission statement of your podcast of uh, painting bravely and uh, being bold and and fearless it's like they're not worried about getting slop on this orc's shield or his arm it's like no we're going to paint and i'm like okay uh here's some green let's let's paint his flesh and so i broke it down in you know just to a few simple steps it's like you know we're going to put four colors of paint on this I would give them just that one color because they're kids and and they're going to be easily distracted if I put all five different colors on there. So, so far, my key points for parents would be just give them a model, let them paint it. And then the next time, kind of give them some instructions, you know, let's paint this area, this color. And then when they're done, let's paint this area, this color. And uh, uh, just, you know, it, it needs to be fun. Um, And I actually I was talking with a parent after the conference uh, last year and uh, and I've actually stayed in communication with them since. And I said, you know, don't you know, don't give them the 50 choices of colors. Um, Ask them, you know, do you want this red, green? You know, ask them what colors, but then just pick out a a color, a hue for them. And uh, because, you know, they just want to have fun. They don't want to make decisions. Why do we always ask our wives, where do you want to eat? Because you know what? <laughs> it's it. Come on, right? And it's like, you know what? Just give me two choices and I'll pick from that and, and we'll be good. So um, I think that would be one of the um, some of the key points I I want to get across to parents to uh, to get their kids into painting. That's good. So let's say that uh, we've we're we're still stuck in our houses for another 30, 45 days or something, and they want to maybe expand it a little bit. Do you have any pointers for how you know? Because there are maybe maybe the parents are um, learning how to teach their children because they're not allowed to go to school. So, so, I understand. So they're teaching them. They're teaching them how to do the regular work and everything. So maybe they have a little hands up to 
what I'm uh, what I'm thinking. But are, are there any pointers for maybe an intermediate beginners class for children? <sighs> Do you think there's anything that we really could point so that so so that the kids are continuing to grow? Well, the way I learned, and uh, I know Dan. Uh, both you and I have uh, a military kind of background and everything in the military, every task in the military has a, a step-by-step process. And so that's, that's what, when I got into painting, I went to, it was uh, Sarastro's painting, his YouTube channel. Okay. And it was, uh-huh. it was step-by-step uh, yep. how to paint every model in the core box and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I didn't understand layering or undercoating. But I would, you know, I remember, um, man, it's, and again, it's been five years since I watched this video, but painting the uh, the Wookiee, you know, he says, OK, the first thing you're going to do is paint it. And it was uh, uh, actually I think it was like Xandri dust. It was that like a tan base color. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense because the Wookiee is going to be brown. But, you know, <laughs> I go and, and that ran across my head. I said, OK, this doesn't make sense. But. He knows what he's doing. I don't. So I paint, you know, I did the undercoat with that tan and then I went back with a brown, you know, and did the different things. So I just blindly followed uh, an instructor that I, you know, I trusted for no other reason than he was painting the things that I want. So I would recommend to a parent if a kid wants to learn, you know, their kid wants to learn how to paint a, uh, a you know, a Stormcast Eternal or a Ultramarine or a Blood Angel or whatever, I would find a video, um, you know, YouTube's full of them. Find a video on how that exact model and paint scheme is going to be painted. And that would help them with maybe learning some techniques, you know, and then uh, kind of maybe push them, you know, uh, past what the parent would be able to uh, be able to teach them themselves. Mm-hmm. Hey Joe, I want to I want to actually follow up with something that you just said there because this is this is a, a, what I've always thought for, okay. an interesting idea. So do you find like you followed Sarastro kind of blindly and did it? Do you find that kids ask a lot more questions or they put you know what I'm saying like do do adults in 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 classes ask more questions or do kids or do kids kind of follow just kind of follow what you say to do? You know what? It, the kids. <laughs> okay, here's. Let me let you in on something. Why I like teaching kids, because because they'll just take your instruction and not uh, question everything. Whereas an adult, we have all these bad habits, and it's like, well, no, I I don't thin my paint this way, or I don't, you know, hold, you know, I I don't, you know, go in this sequence. Whereas the kids, they may have some questions, but they're very uh, surface level. Um, you know, why are we painting this brown? You know, that may be their question as opposed to, well, I would use this brand of paint. A- an adult would ask something, you know, that may conflict with their uh, uh, their uh, uh, preferences. Like, and I would say a kid, a child would uh, kind of just, you know, they're used to an adult uh, teacher authority figure giving them instruction and then following them. You know, we could probably learn a lesson or two by doing that ourselves as as adults. So, you know, I was just about to joke around about uh, you saying that um, uh, you're using a wrong, you know, brand or wrong color. Um, and I was just thinking about our brush, com- brush conversation from our yeah. last episode. And you just kind of like nailed it that as adults, we don't question for understanding unless <laughs> we really need to understand. But we questioning possibly like the tools and that you know that might sometimes just you know derail us in our conversations or um our understanding of what's going on because you know it's like hey what's the best brush or what's the best paint and you have all these you know all this information starts coming in and then you know it just trickles into an argument and the next thing you know we're all going to get viruses and yeah uh, and, and, like and models aren't getting painted yeah well, exactly. yeah there you go I have to respond to this guy. Hold on. Okay, now I got to stop it. Oh, here's another question. I got to answer that one now. Yeah. And oh, I just spent four hours and I could have painted three Space Marines. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it sounds like the easiest thing to be a better, braver, and happier painter is to paint like a child. 
You, you know what? There's a, a lot to be said about that, Mike. Um, uh, cause they have fun. You know, we get all caught up in, man, this is the wrong. I, I don't have a fist in red to paint this space marine. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid to mix a paint that's going to be slightly off hue. So I'm not going to paint. I'm going to, uh, you know, wait till I get to the game shop to get paint. You know, whereas the kid's like, well, you know what? I don't have the right color of red. I guess I'm going to paint this thing blue. You know what? They're going to, you know, I always tell people, hey, my models, whether they're painted, you know, the highest level or the lowest level, I can roll bad dice with either one of those models. The die, the dice gods don't care about style. Points. No, no, they don't. They don't. You know, and it's in these kids. Hey, you know what? If we can do something, you know, if we're going to try to introduce painting into their life as a hobby, um, we we have a responsibility as uh, that adult or authority figure to have fun um, because they're, they're you know what? They're they got a, a life full of um, not fun you know, in their future uh, as, you know, as adults and whatnot. So, you know what, let's introduce a hobby that's going to be, you know, as much as close to a hundred percent fun as possible. You know, again, I find myself, you know, getting uh, bent around the axle about something in the hobby, you know, personally me. And I'm like, well, why, why, you know, why am I getting upset about this? I'm, I'm paying a model, have fun. The word again, Take a couple of steps back. We're, you know, grown, we're adults playing with plastic soldiers, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, we need to, you know, t- there's certain things, competitions and such. You know, there's a different level of seriousness and, uh, uh, you know, importance to it. But, you know, just painting for fun. I mean, if you're just a, ca- a, a gamer and painting your models, you know, you're not enjoying it. You know, uh, and, and you want to enjoy it. Some people just they like playing the game and they'll play plastic models forever. One of the guys in my absolute beginner class last year had been playing for, I think he said, 15 years and had never played with a painted model. And I'm like, really? Wow. And he's like, yeah, and I'm done with that. I'm going to start painting, you know, so uh, uh, hopefully that, mm-hmm. you know, endeavor has been enjoyable for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, besides the the painting with the kids and everything, uh, what kind of stuff are you working on for yourself? For myself? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I have a, I have a never ending. I always add armies, and I, I was <laughs> so Age of Sigmar is my <laughs> my thing, and uh, so I have a Stormcast Eternal army. I'm looking at my shelf here. Stormcast. What, uh, what, cha- what chamber? Uh, so I'm like the the hallowed man, the regular box art. That's another issue I have uh, that I'm working on. I I look at the box and I'm like, well, that looks really good. That's how I'm going to paint it. I don't I don't vary from that. So that that's the uh, uh, the warrior chamber, not warrior chamber, but yeah. the hallowed knights. Is that what they are? Okay. Just the nice. blue and gold. I do celestial vindic- vindicators, the teal so that, and white. Tur- teal, yes. I mean, so here's another thing I want to do, just kind of parenthetical here, is just have like, because I want to have like a detachment of, you know, liberators from this chamber. And yeah, you know what? Hey, and I only play casual at best. Um, so it's like, you know what? Maybe they won't get that keyword or whatever since they're, you know, painted that way or whatever. But I would love to have like this rainbow coalition <laughs> for, for everything. Because awesome. I don't want to paint, I don't want to paint a nice. whole army, you know, a whole army of this or that. It's like, well, no, I just, I'm, you know, I'm That's, kind of a buffet. I'm a buffet kind of guy. I want a little of this and a little of that. That's you know, exactly, put, gra- yep. put gravy on top of everything. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> That's what I've been contemplating lately is I'm like, man, I don't really want to paint a whole entire armies of sisters, but I do want at least one squad to start with. And then maybe later on, I'll pick up another. And then I'm like, man, those freaking word bearers look pretty darn cool. Maybe I'll do a squad of those. Oh, how about these guys? These, you know, so, so Dan, that's, guys. One of the nice, just... <laughs> that's one of the nice things about being a commission painter is I get to paint, you know, a little bit of that. And then it leaves. I don't have to look at it. Oh, anymore. 
it's like oh you don't it's, have it's, to look at it i yeah, want to look at it though i want to look at it in my my cabinet of yeah and put See, it out there. yeah so i have a i have stormcast i have fire slayers i have sylvaneth um so i have that as far as age of sigmar i have uh, just i have gloom spike gets i have a lot of um the oh what's the the board game underworlds the, the shade spire shade, shade, shade spire so i have oh. like, almost all the war bands so i get a, a little taste of that and then i i did back uh, a small kickstarter a couple of years ago called joan of arc so I have. Oh, that wasn't a small Kickstarter. <laughs> so, I have, so I have. I've done a little bit of painting. I think I have about 1,200 models left, plus terrain <laughs> on that. <laughs> what about the? Did you get the giant dragon too? Oh, oh yes. Yeah, I'm looking at it uh, in pieces right now on the bottom shelf of the the display case there. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it takes up my whole closet. So. Uh, but I have a, I have a, I'm in the process of developing a course uh, to uh, to be given at uh, seminars or at uh, conventions on uh, dealing with the psychological uh, part of getting through that your pile of plastic. So looking at the uh, the psychological end of that, my wife is a uh, she went to a certificate level life coaching class, and so I'm getting some help from her like asking questions and, and uh, getting some help with that to uh, so that I can go out and help people um, di- not just deal with, but um, examine the psychological part of this hobby and uh, the hangups that we may have. And then also talk about techniques, um, painting techniques and color scheme techniques to help them get through or at least get, and get started on uh, that, that war on gray. Mm-hmm. I could see you with like a kind of the microphone headset on walking around a room and <laughs> telling, telling people, yes, you can finish that army and you can, you know, <laughs> you can glaze that model. I can see it. I can see it. It fits your personality. It's kind of warm and open. I got you. I'll, so, I'll be in there. I'll, hey, I'll be in there. I'll be in the front row of that class. Talking about my, talking about my personalities, I, I received the uh, highest compliment, I believe, ever as a painter. Uh, the other day, uh, it's talking, I, I do small classes, like, uh, four person, uh, classes at my house, um, for, you know, the local guys here. And we have a military installation nearby. So I get, uh, soldiers, uh, coming in. So do just real simple painting classes. And, uh, I had actually a very, uh, good painter, uh, friend of mine here. He had his son come in and paint. And, uh, we we're talking and, uh, his, I was chatting with his dad, and uh, he, he he called me the Mister Rogers of miniature painting. <laughs> there you and, go. And uh, he asked his son Kenny. He goes, Kenny, is is that about right? He goes, Oh yeah, that's exactly right. And I'm like, You know what? There's I, I can't think of a higher. Nobody's gonna say I'm the same lens of miniature painting. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm bald and I don't paint as good no, as Sam. So uh, the Mister Rogers of miniature painting. I will. Uh, I may, maybe that'll be my thing. I'll start wearing a red sweater at these conventions. There you go, man. There's your branding. It's right <laughs> come there. In. Yeah, I, I got it now. Come in. You take it off. You put an apron, like a painting apron, on, and some better shoes. <laughs> I feel he put sandals on or something. That's right. right. Little yeah. loafers. That's it. It's like, all right, lick my paintbrush. <laughs> Let's go, kids. <laughs> so, I, you know, I actually want to ask, I go back a little bit to the teaching kids thing, because I've been thinking about this a little bit, because, uh, you know, I have three, uh, 16, 13, and, and uh, 11, I'll and they're varying very a very interest interest in painting and art and stuff along those yeah. lines. But uh, so I've always wondered. I you know I know I hear all the studies about how art is good for all the different types of of learning, learning colors and learning color theory or anything. Is there a way to kind of like do the zucchini and the pasta thing where you kind of sneak in some theory and stuff like that for kids that they you, you don't they don't necessarily know you're teaching them color theory, but uh, you're kind of sneaking it in there. Well, what you could do is kind of like giving leading questions. Um, you can, you know, put down uh, the three primary colors 
and say, hey, we're going to use these colors. And then they're going to say, well, I really want orange. OK, well, let me show you. You can make orange. So now we can start dealing with complementary colors. And uh, right there. So now you've just showed them science. You know, mm-hmm. uh, they're like, well, this is this is pretty neat. And the questions, you know, you can, you know, again, put leading things up there. Um, I would say, uh, say you wanted to talk uh, just, uh, you know, color theory. You could say, hey, let's paint this model. OK, whatever. let's grab an orc. Let's grab whatever. Just a little model. And let's try painting with these colors. And, you know, you could use some really non complementary kind of colors and you can kind of show them what garish looks like, you know, or, cl- you know, colors that clash. And then, you can, you know, paint the same thing with complementary type colors. And uh, you can, you know, uh, now, granted, there's. You know, in art, we, we like to say, well, you know, there's no wrong choices in color and stuff. But there, you know, we say that, but then we talk about color theory, you know. And sometimes we confuse, you know, there's no bad color choices with, you know, co- we, we call that color theory. But that's really just an opinion. You know, we're talking about your opinion. Like painting, you know, my storm ta- Stormcast Eternals blue and gold. And some people are like, hate it. You know, those that color scheme is well within the, the limits of acceptable, but your preference may not be that. And so, you know, we want to tell kids or whatever, hey, you know, if you want to paint your storm ca- or your, you know, whatever, your storm cast uh, green and gold or, or green or red or whatever, that's fine. But there's some things that just don't look good. And they'll know that. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, if they're, you know. Uh, again, young, mm-hmm. like much younger, I, like, you know, you're talking about a young elementary, a six year old kid. They're just going to paint. They just want to go through the physical activity of painting, you know, because it's different. You know, they're used to pencils or crayons. And now you're you're introducing a whole new medium uh, to them and, and tools and stuff and these toys. But, you know, you're you know, like you're talking, Mike, with your uh, your kids, 11 to 16 years old. They know what look, you know, is, uh, um, you know, cl- colors that clash. So you can, yeah, you can kind of sneak in some learning there. And then when they have questions, you, you know, you point them. It's somebody on stream asked me the other day, you know, what three books uh, would you recommend and why? I said, well, I'll tell you the why. All the good artists recommend these books, and that's why I recommend them. So you point, <laughs> you, know, you, 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 point you know, you have a copy of James Gurney's Color and Light. Uh, you have... Uh, uh, Figopedia, you know, and, and stuff like that. And you have those resources and let them thumb through it. And, you know, um, I, again, I, I have, have no artistic ability. I, my handwriting is horrible. I've never been able to draw. Um, I've always wanted to draw. I can't play a musical instrument. I'm I'm really not artistic. And that's for me when I learned, I just needed to be told, use this color. And I went and bought the exact color he said. You know, there's no way if he said get ceramite white, there's no way I could use a Vallejo white. It just to me, it broke down right there. So to me, give me a step and do it. And then I learned, you know, so I learned like brush control and, you know, I learned dry brushing and, and some of these um, concepts. And then you can take it and I'm like, oh, OK, we glazed this model. Well, what if I wanted to glaze, you know, this this model this way? And then, you know, you start searching YouTube and you find your resources. And I, I think that's what how, you know, you're only going to be able to to trick the kids into learning so much. They're, they're smarter than us anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. We don't tell them that because they don't, they don't need to that's, know that. Yeah, that's it. My daughter, they already think it. Yeah. My daughter's 24 years old. I, I've learned that lesson a while back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that, that we always joke in our house about that, that our kids live with the two stupidest people on the planet <laughs> in my way. <laughs> you know. uh, I'm sure at times there's truth to that. Sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, the stoof, they, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? <laughs> the, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, 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 no I don't. I, I can't I, think of any other questions right now. <laughs> 
I mean, so, he was he used a whole bunch of great information. Of no, course. he did absolutely. So, um, Joe, let me ask you this: when uh, when you're approaching, just let's kind of move on a little bit from the kids, but to adults that are new to the hobby, um, kind of what it. I don't want you to give like your your secret recipe or way or anything, but what kind of is your order for how you approach adults that are new to the hobby? So uh, in the classes, actually the classes last year were about 30 minutes shorter than I would have liked. I think this year they're, I think they're a full two hours. So uh, I can spend a little bit of time in like model prep, but to me, um, It's very simple. I I haven't heard uh, a lot of I haven't heard a lot of different ways to approach prepping uh, a model. Um, For one, you can just buy a bones model that really doesn't need any. You know, you're not building it. You know, you clean it up or whatever. But uh, so I I tend to just bring in models that are already built uh, and I just use um, uh, Space Marines is what I used last year. and my main thing is I want them to have a finished model, painted model when we leave, um, because it's that uh, that's that small sense of accomplishment that I'm hoping will carry them on. There's tons of information. There's there's a lot better information than I'm going to give them out there on the Internet. Uh, there's um, just a redundancy in it. And it's and that's great because there's certain there's certain instructors on YouTube I don't care for. I don't uh, click with them. And then there's some that I do. So I just want to get them out there. But what I uh, what I try to do is get them a model. And to me, I, I think if I the first thing I ever painted was a stormtrooper. So white. Correct. So opened up a pot of Citadel white paint stuck my brush in and started painting. And so I was, there's no way I could succeed at that point. It was going to be chalky and all that. So I talk about thinning paint and, uh, um, I, I get to show them and we go through like a little exercise of, uh, thinning paint. And again, uh, me and uh, I, Sam Lynn's got to have a, a little talk about this and it's it's not just the dilution of the paint, but it's the controllable amount on your brush, which and I think that part gets left off a lot because you can thin paint to the right dilution, but then you have too much. And for some reason, we I mean, paint is expensive. I mean, it's whatever, seven dollars a pot for Citadel and you don't want to waste it. But, you know, we're never you know, we often are um, as a, a beginner painter don't want to clean off that brush and 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 there's some things in painting that are counter uh, intuitive, like mixing paint and then taking it, taking it off your brush. Uh, so I like going over thinning paint and having a controllable amount. And, and what does that mean? Having a controllable amount. Um, and then just um, with the right size brush. I mean, those are, and I didn't, I don't have my notes in front of me that I go over, but I want to say that's like the two biggest things I tried to impress upon a new painter is, you know, uh, why, you know, uh, why to thin your paint, why to use hobby paint um, for a beginner. Um, using hobby paint is just going to lessen the amount of frustration versus like a craft paint. Right. Um, so that and then using proper brushes, you know, uh, using a, a brush that's large enough that's going to stay moist a brush that's large enough that you can have a lot of paint on the first half on the tip of the brush so that you can control it and stuff like that. And, uh, I go, so thinning paint, uh, just base coating. Um, just talk about, I do a little bit of, you know, here's your model. We're painting an ultramarine paint the whole thing blue. Don't worry about over, you know, slop, you know, cut in the trim on the shoulder pad. And then, uh, usually, but by, by the end, we can go over and we can like, you know, talk about edge highlighting. We may not do that in the class itself. Um, at least last year when we only had um, the hour and a half classes, we didn't do edge highlighting. Um, but we talked about it and then we talked about uh, dry brushing as well. Um, so, you know, these are just, you know, somebody that thins their paint right is going to just enjoy painting. Uh, the frustration is not going to be there. Base coat a model. Uh, 
how to paint a detail, how to paint, you know, how to use a large brush, like a, a whatever, a size six, size eight, you know, brush, how to use that to paint, you know, the Aquila on a Space Marine or, or the trim on their shoulder pad. You don't need to get a, a triple zero to paint those things in. Uh, the, again, um, I, I'm a avid golfer as well. And uh, I've read, <laughs> read and watched a lot of videos on uh, learning the golf and uh, teaching people. And so often um, you take them out to the driving range, give them a driver because that's, if they hit it properly, it's going to, you know, produce the longest shot and that looks cool, but you're going to have the uh, greatest um, amount of failure with that club it's, as opposed to going to the putting range, teaching them to put a ball four foot, they can have success right then. So I try to, um, structure my class so that in an hour and a half or two hours, they will succeed. And by succeeding, they have a model that's fully painted. Um, you know, I always, and that's one of the things, all the models that I bring in there, I already have them, uh, uh, the bases either textured or, uh, fully painted black so that if, you know, when they're done, their model is done, you know, it, it looks finished. So that's kind of my concept. Um, no, it's so those victories are so important to keep people moving forward and showing they can do it. That's that's impressive. That's a great way to approach it, Joe. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I know I like having you know, even if it's a small victory, and that's why I like in commission painting when I uh, when I was doing army size things, I found out real quick. You know what? Painting uh, twenty reavers, you know. I'm not going to save as much time, that much time batch painting 20 as I am four sets of five. But I have victory, victory and completion more times and more uh, more steadily. So for mm -hmm. me and that that's me, some people, they can just lock in and, and you know, do 20, you know, at a time. I need uh, I'm. Uh, I, I'm needy, I guess. I need to have that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need that daily affirmation. You know? I have not finished a squad of anything in well over two years, so I can't yeah. even. I can't even. Do, I can't even do like I'm. If I have two models on a diorama that are the same, I'm like, oh yeah, this isn't happening. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and you know <laughs> that's part I of bored. like knowing your audience when you teach. You got to know yourself. Uh, you, two days ago. I was looking at my, my paint area and uh, I, I was getting a, a little overwhelmed because I was like, I had so many. I mean, right now I'm looking at just not individual models, but like groups for different people. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that the sixth one was a huge, is a huge commission. Uh, and then plus I have like a side project so i got seven projects within literally i'm sticking my arm out now arms reach and i'm like joe you got to stop and finish something and uh, so it's like okay i finished this part of the project and set it aside i didn't finish the whole project but i finished what i had going um and so i have to like throttle forward and throttle back on projects and uh when I realize, you know, hopefully I can realize in time, I'm getting a little overwhelmed. And that's when it's like, okay, today I'm just painting on this one project and finishing, you know, uh, yesterday I was like, okay, I had, um, I'm ironically painting my fourth corset of Imperial Assault, the first thing I ever painted. Uh, I'm painting another one uh, to kind of uh, auction off and try to support some local shops here but it's like i had seven models i'm like just you know spend two three hours finish that and and set it aside and then get on something else and uh, so again different you know everybody has different styles um so you know try see what works best for you you know and some people just think man my favorite painter you know i know dan paints this way and in badge painting, so I'm going to paint like him. Well, man, if that doesn't work for you, you know, switch gears, switch gears. My badge painting just sits on my desk. Yeah. I that's that, badge <laughs> sitting. <laughs> and that's, see, that's the thing, though, Dan. 
you know, maybe we're just talking, you know, to you, for you. Here. <laughs> it's like, you know, hey, maybe instead of 20 uh, Terminators that I'm trying to get done, you know what, let me work on two or whatever. You know, and I have a lot of time. I'm painting you know, five to eight hours a day. So it's easy for me to just say, okay, today I'm going to knock out a project. I know that. I know it's different for me. Whereas you may be like, okay, I need to put all projects aside for the next two weeks and just paint these X amount of, you know, Terminators or or whatever. So, you know, you could have thrown out almost any squad type (laughs) and that would have, that would have applied for Dan. You could have said Terminators, Raven Wing, Chaos. You, you know, you name it. It would have. It I have would have a little bit of Dan. inside what what's on Dan's desk. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, the, he, he had a little the pizza in there. <laughs> yeah, I can. I my you know my desk is full of primed vehicles and and armies. It's just getting those details done man that's the tedious part for me that's that's my wall and, you know I, I just i just can't get past it sometimes but when i get into it and get into a groove it's kind of fun i really enjoy like really digging in and trying stuff out and making things work but then i start getting tied down and like 45 hours later i'm still working on a dude's eyeballs just yeah. you know hey that one of the other things uh, to to plug myself <laughs> sure in, in that class is uh, I'm try- well in the class I'm developing is coming up with like a three tier um, or three stages of painting and uh, so that it's like you know get your army or squad or whatever um, up to this level you know and as commission painters uh, are not me so much or in uh, a lot of there's some paint services that have, you know, you know, very defined tiers. You know, they'll have six different tiers because they're very good at what they do and they, and they know how to define that. Um, I have painted and unpainted. Those are my two tiers that I But you can <laughs> you could, you know, get that army. You know, you've already bought the army and then, you know, obviously you have to build it, but you want to get it a sense of completion and, and play that army. Uh, and you know, you can always go back, you know, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing a, a model that's, you know, we'll say three colors and based, you know, kind of tournament level. We'll get your whole army up to that level. And then, okay, now I'm going to start on this. I'm going to start, you know, with a higher highlight. So, you know, Dan, that may be something you do like, okay, I want to get my army up to this level, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm going to paint the rim on every model, you know, black or whatever color you want it to be, <laughs> you know, maybe that's it. And there you go. You have a success. You, you've met a, um, a success point there. And then, okay, hey, the next thing I want to do is, you know, whatever. I, again, but I think the first level on that, the, the whole model needs to be painted. Um, and, and, you know, the, all primer should be covered. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, but and a lot of people just, well, I don't want to have to spend time going back over this. Well, you know what? You're, you're going to spend time anguishing over unpainted models uh, probably <laughs> longer than it would take to, you know, paint back over. You know, like my Stormcast, I, you know, I would just, you know, starting off, I just airbrushed the whole thing gold, you know, and then I start cutting in blue and then I stopped. And then, you know, so the base had all this, you know, gold paint on it. And I'm like, you know what? One day I said, I'm I'm going to finish my very elementary basing on all my models. And I'm, you know, I'm painting the rim on all those bases. And uh, some of them are in varying degrees of finished from their shoes up. But, you know, all their bases are painted and stuff. And, and they, you know, when you put them on the table, you put 2000 points on the table, you know, you, you don't see you know, uh, the, the huge difference in paint there, you know, so, mm-hmm. so I just got to learn, I got to figure out how to word that, uh, and, and convey that thought, you know, you know to, to the people. Uh, and now have you done anything outside of like the, the, the miniature world? Like, have you gone into like busts or larger scale models or like 75 millimeter and up? 
at all? Uh, I've purchased some of that stuff, of course. <laughs> um, no, no, I haven't. I did. Uh, I have. I bought some busts, some small busts. Um, actually, at the Nova um, a couple of years ago, a couple of Novas ago, when we met, I bought a lot. That was my first convention ever. So I bought a lot of everything there. Oh, nice. and, uh, I don't even know. I, I couldn't even. It would take me moments to find even where those busts are. They used to be, I used to have them on the shelf in front of me. They are not there anymore. Um, but no, I haven't. And I, every year I put it on my list of things to do, you know, new things to try, you know, paint a bust. And I, I, got, I picked up one of those really cool uh, William Wallace, you know, but yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. so cool. Yeah, I, I have no idea where it is. And uh, and it's not even primed. <laughs> so, but no, uh, just uh, regular, you know, tabletop gaming, and and smaller. <laughs> I'm going the wrong direction. <laughs> so, hey, do you, Joe, do you mind if I ask you some of the common questions we ask our guests? I don't mind at all. <laughs> These are more fun. Good. No, no, it's all been fun. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. And so, all right. Is there a model out there that hasn't been made that you'd like to see made and, and to paint? Oh, I know. And I know the, I know these questions that are coming too. Um, a model that has been made that I love to see made, man. Um, I, again, I'm a huge star Wars fan and most of that stuff is, has been made, you know, they're just, they're just guys in robes with, you know, right. lightsabers and stuff. So, um, I'm trying to think of something. <sighs> My example is I, I want to see the characters from the Dark, Stephen King's Dark Tower series. Uh, yeah, that would be uh, that would be spectacular. Yeah, that yeah. would be good. Especially, would probably, especially you know, if was, they were done in the Jay Lee style, like from the graphic yeah, novels. Oh, 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 yeah, Sorry. I would probably no. Uh, the other day, yesterday, maybe even, I was thinking about, man, I'm going to have to see if I can look this up real quick, too. Uh, one of my favorite cartoons growing up, um, and I think we're all about the same age, I think it was Thundar. Ah, yes. Yes, there Thundar is. Thundar the Barbarian. There is, is are. It, there yeah, are Thundar some. the Barbarian. Because yep. I loved, I mean, I'm rewatching Star Wars Rebels, and then, uh, um, there's oh, what's his name that kind of looks like the furry guy in Thundar, but uh, I just remember the cool. intro. Yes, the, the intro to that that cartoon where the moon, you know, there's like earthquake and all that, and then the moon just like splits in half. And I just I was like, oh, that was so cool. So I was thinking about that. So if there's some Thundar uh, models out there, I would enjoy painting that. Uh, I, I don't know if I've seen any. I don't, they're probably not a big market for that. <laughs> it was it was a big hit in my childhood, but I don't Our know. Mine that. too. Oh. <laughs> mine too. So yeah, that's a, I would have I'd, I'd, I'd have to see the Thundar and the Barbarian, uh, the Barbarian models. Yeah. All right. So if I if a paint company came to you and said we want to make a Joe White color. What color would it be? And it can't be white. Just you laugh. That, that's <laughs> cheating. It would have. It would have to be white. It's, it's Joe White. It's, it's Joe. It's Joe's white. Joe's white. <laughs> Joe's white. I man, again, like my favorite colors to paint. Just well, one of the biggest colors is, you know, for the Stormcast is the blue. I, I've always liked blue and green. Uh, great colors to paint with. And uh, with the Sylvaneth, I get to paint, you know, a lot of accent greens with the browns and stuff. So it would probably be like a Kelly green type color, I would have to say, something like that. We we'll call it Joe White's Kelly green. Joe White's Kelly green. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Me, Joe Green. <laughs> See, as a Steelers fan, I appreciate that. So. Uh, I, I, uh, I know. Yeah, there we go. There's the Dan sigh. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I said it. That's right. 
so I guess kind of the big question that we always ask is, you know, our, we, our goal is to help our listeners and ourselves become better, braver, and happier painters. A- any um, last minute of advice for, for our listeners? Uh, better, braver, and happier. Uh, to, to be a better painter, you, you got to get the reps in. Uh, you know, we, we watch these YouTube videos with these great painters and they make it look so effortless. And it's because they've, uh, they've put in the practice, the deliberate practice, uh, the reps and, uh, they've done it. So if you want to get better and, and I can just be talking to myself, you know, maybe turn YouTube paint tutorials off and pick up a paintbrush, um, have a paint station, prepared and ready or a kit, a travel kit ready so that you can get painting quickly. And uh, to be better, you got to paint more Um, and uh, not just quantity, because I've done that Um, last year. I I was when I was doing my taxes and figuring everything, I painted over 500 models last year, but I don't think I got better as a painter. I may have got quicker, but not better. So it's not just about getting the reps in, but you need to be deliberate about what you're doing and practicing and, um, you know, get feedback. So better, there you go. Um, to be happier, you paint what you like. Um, I've painted a lot of models that aren't fun. I've turned down jobs cause I'm like, I, I just, I don't want to paint, you know, that color or that model, you know, and you know, there's other people that will. So paint the things that you like, finish the models that you like. Um, not just Dan, but everybody. You know, um, <laughs> and, and let's see, better, uh, bold, bolder, uh, right? Is it our middle one or is it braver? better, braver, braver, happier. braver? And I have my, I have Matt's sticker, the hashtag paint bravery there. So I should have, I should have got that. Um, braver, I would say, and again, this is for myself is, uh, you know, paint something out of your comfort zone. So for me, that's not painting box art. Um, uh, it's, you know, maybe it's painting that bust or it's painting a fantasy model versus a sci-fi model or steampunk or whatever. Um, paint something different, you know, take one of your hobby days or a a week of hobby time and and paint something. So, uh, yeah, paint more, paint different and, uh, you know, paint to completion. You know, Uh, I think there's a, a lot of fun. I think we're robbing ourselves of a lot of fun by not finishing, you know, as many models as we could. I know we don't paint, finish as many as we want because we want to finish all of them. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Thank you. You know, you know, I found something out, too, the other day. I, I did my first speed competition over the weekend. And uh, I, I found out, you know, I, I'm finding out more and more about myself. And actually... <laughs> I did okay. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't win anything, but it actually got further along than I thought. And my goal was not to pick. I honestly, I probably would have, would have done better in the competition if I would have picked like a, a space Marine, cause that's right. an easy, easy shapes to paint. But I actually went with something that, that, uh, was a samurai archer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <not right. laughs> oh, yeah. But it actually turned out and I was like, well, that's some of the things in there. I couldn't I, I couldn't second guess myself anymore because I didn't have the time. Yeah. And yeah. so I actually for the first time ever nailed the eyes on both sides on the first try. Well, there you go. Like, I didn't have a choice. There was no going back. So <laughs> <laughs> it was either going to be right or googly eyed. You that's know, <laughs> that's right. you have to paint a, paint a bandana over their eyes. <laughs> Or you know, just paint the flesh and pretend like they're blind or they're eye, they're shooting the arrow with their eyes closed, right? right? There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's good stuff. Oh, uh, Dan, do you have anything else, man? Uh, I don't have any. Well, I don't have any specific questions, but um, be- before we started recording this, Joe mentioned that he was doing some stuff online. So here's your chance to plug all the great stuff you're doing out there, Joe. Uh-huh. All right. I I'll, I'll, don't have a lot of great stuff, but I have a lot of stuff. Uh, so uh, I can I have an Instagram account and I uh, everything I have is under Smooth Blend Studio, which is just so fun to say. Um, so uh, I'm on Facebook and uh, on Instagram and I've been doing some streaming, um, a lot of 
a lot of people are working from home and are just home. And uh, so I started doing that, just going doing a Facebook Live in a local community group. And then uh, I uh, decided, you know what, I'm just going to put that on my uh, business on the fa- on the Smoothland Studio page. So I I stream uh, every most days. I haven't like nailed down a schedule yet, but I'm uh, I'm over here in Arizona, so uh, kind of. Um, about mid morning for most of the United States, I'm on there, uh, and then Instagram, and that's that's it for right now. I do have a YouTube channel that I'm working on rebranding and getting that up to speed. But yeah, right now Facebook and Instagram is is kind of where I'm hanging out and, and just uh, talking, answering questions, uh, just encouraging people to paint more. Excellent. And we know that you uh, will be teaching some classes, whatever our contra or. Uh, conventions come back online. I'm sure you'll be going to a few of those and teaching some classes, yep. uh, small, medium, or large. And um, you also have a commissioning service, right? I do. Uh, I do commission painting. Uh, I'm I'm very blessed that I don't have to to paint to pay bills, um, uh, but I do almost always have. Uh, uh, a commission painting going on. I don't carry a, a big backlog. That's just undue stress for me and, and frustration for customers. But yeah, if you have something you want me to paint uh, or just talk about uh, a job, um, yeah, Facebook would be a, a great way to hit me up uh, and we could discuss that. Awesome. <laughs> Oops, sorry. No. Who was that? Was that you, Mike? That was me. I actually, I. I had to. Call. I apologize. I'm <laughs> I actually was hitting mute while I coughed, and my cough caused me to hit unmute. So, right. <laughs> Joe, we are trained professionals at this. It's, 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 it's worth the price of admission, right? right. <laughs> Just so you know, when we post the episode, we'll put all the links to your Smooth Blonde stu- Studio stuff in the show notes, and so people will definitely have a chance to. Uh, be able to actively click and find you. Thank you. That'd be great. Yeah. All three, all three listeners. Yes. Right. That's it. <laughs> hey man, we're, we're over 850 downloads, dude. We're getting to that century mark. Oh, uh, that's, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, you, I'll you, take you know what? I, uh, I, I was an intern of sort. Well, that's what they said. I was for a, uh, I used to collect coins. I was real big into coin collecting and there's like no podcasts out there about that. And these two guys from uh, Indianapolis area, did this podcast and uh, they needed somebody to do some research for them. So I'm like, yeah, sure. I listened to them. And uh, they started off like, you know, very small, very meager. And then I remember, I don't know, they're about 30 episodes into it. And they're like, we just hit 1 million downloads. And it's like, holy crap. The thing, you know, anything you do on the internet is global. So it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, it it just starts taking off and, and, uh, with myself being the exception, you've had some great people. Oh, so, no. so, so <laughs> the interview. Uh, I, I will increase your audience by uh, uh, Dolores. She'll download. <laughs> she my wife. She'll download. Do we going to log in under her name? We'll take she, it. That's, we'll it, take that's it. it. That's it. That's it. So no, uh, I think what you're doing is great. I enjoyed the variety um, of the podcast. I've been uh, talking to some people about it as well. Um, cause it's different. Uh, it, it's, it's fun. It's different. And, you know, uh, if they want to know how to thin paint, they can come talk to me, but if they want to stay interested while they're painting, they can listen to you guys. <laughs> there you go. Cause I'm not going to show you how thin to, to thin your paint. <laughs> see it right here. See it. You got to see this line right here. I'll take a picture and see, send it to you. <laughs> it's, it's a ploy. Actually, we've w- woven in between like all into the audio, like, you will add three drops of water to one drop of paint. No, you can't hear it, but if you play us backwards, there are there are instructions. Oh, that's what this hobby needs is some back masking audio podcast. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, All right. Thank you so much for taking the time, Joe. It's been a, it's been an awesome talking to you. We should do this offline. We don't need to do this with, while we're recording. We should just hang out and chat, anyways. You yeah, know what? And since we have all this free time, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and I feel bad because I know, I know. Sometimes y'all hit up uh, Sam on his Twitch stream, and I'm usually like on it all the time. And uh, 
Dolores has been working from home and her hours have shifted. So again, this difficult lifestyle I have, so we can still socially distance uh, out on the golf course. So we've been playing a lot of golf, which is during the time of Sam's stream. So oh, <laughs> I hope to, yeah, but uh, it, it is nice to, to get together even, you know, uh, via, you know, uh, Facebook live or Twitch or whatever, and, um, uh, you know, just hang out. And I yeah. find that even with buddies of mine locally, we always think about, well, if we're going to get together, we need to find a four hour block of time so we can, you know, set the armies up and, and throw some dice. And uh, I'll find myself now just like, hey, you know, let's go let's go have coffee or not. You know, obviously not right now with the social distancing. But before that, it's like, you know what? I know you have stuff going on, but you know what? Let's go hang out for 30 minutes or, you know. Again, my schedule is very flexible. It's like, hey, let me meet you wherever you're having lunch. You know, we can talk about, you know, whatever, you know, painting, gaming or nothing. You know, so, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, uh, yeah. It's funny because everybody's like, ah, you know, I'm at home now and this, that, another. I'm like, I've been practicing, you know, <laughs> isolation for two years now. <laughs> my life has not changed. <laughs> Oh yeah, the the reclusive nature. Like my my wife has struggled a little bit more. She's much more gregarious than I. I'm more of the, oh well, what do you mean we haven't been out in three weeks? You know, it, four weeks? Yeah. Oh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> That's to hell with people. <laughs> That's it. With Dolores, she would get home from work before all this started, and she's like, "Hey, have, did you talk to anybody today?" Oh yeah, you know Sam had a stream. She goes, "No, typing in a chat window." is not talking. I'm like, but he talked back to me. So doesn't that count? And she's like, yeah, you need to go to the game <laughs> store and <laughs> talk to your nerd friends. There's only, she's a great wife, but she's like, she knows her limits. She could identify between age of Sigmar and 40 K. So well, I'm, that's I'm, awesome. That's it is awesome. She's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching her. She's doing a, a paint by numbers. Uh, in oh her, gosh. Oh yeah, that's her thing. She's yeah, it's, hey, yeah. that's awesome. My uh, my wife and uh, my youngest uh, like to sit and do those really elaborate coloring books together. Yeah, I can watch them. Good. I can watch them do that for hours. It's awesome. Yeah, they have a good time doing it. <laughs> you know, and my 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 middle child now is actually she's the one you can't control. She's the the rebel of the family, and so she paints, but she refuses to be stuck to a structured three-dimensional model. Uh, she wants a can, a blank canvas to work uh, on. And I'm like, what, honey, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, you well, know? That's, it. that's it. Here's a ream of paper. <laughs> right. That's, that's cool. we, we, that's you know cool. what? We, we did a curbside delivery the other day for Michaels, and we got her a 20-pack of canvases. And, and oh, I, I, I have a it. stack... Well, it was ten dollars for twenty canvases. Oh, like, that's pretty crap. damn good, man. No, it, good. Yeah, I mean they're just, they're like eleven by seventeen canvases. Are not huge, but uh, and I have tubs and tubs of craft paint. I'm like, here's crappy brushes. Yeah. Here's you know, here's all the paint you could ever want. Um, have at it. Yeah. Enjoy Here yourself. You know. There so. you go. I was forty two. I was forty two years old when I got into this hobby. Oh yeah, we are all about the same age. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. 46. So yeah, I'm 40. Yeah. I turned 47 earlier this year. But yeah, you know, so I I got into this late. I wish, you know, looking back now, uh, man, I wish I would have just you know got into you know this. I I just enjoy this uh, this hobby. I can't think of another hobby that I've enjoyed as much. And, and like I talked about golf, I love golf. I live on a golf course. I, you know, but I, this, I don't have golf is frustration. It's fun and frustration. <laughs> this is uh, uh, painting has just really helped me just be calm and have fun and, you know, creative, you know, the little bit of creativity that I have. Uh, yeah. So no, I, I think it's great. And, and again, that's one of my pushes and my passions for getting kids painting and maybe learning some you know proper painting stuff but uh yeah you know there, there's a lot of good stuff in there 
they may be able to learn math and stuff too with uh, uh, dice. So maybe there's that upside too. <laughs> oh, they you know fra- they learned fractions from mix- mixing paint. They learned, I mean, right. there's a, there's so yeah. much involved with yeah. Uh, I, I believe learning art is is. We so could have a whole. Of it. Yeah, well, yeah whole, right. We, we could have a whole show on that. How uh, how the arts improve all the other subjects. I get to listen to it every day. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, he's, you're married to an art teacher. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lucky me. Yay. That's it. And your models aren't finished, Dan. Huh? Right. Really? <laughs> nope. Want <laughs> to get one more dig in on you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to send you a picture of all my buckets and piles of of colored space marines and oh, other critters because yeah. they've all at least been you know and i and i hate that I, I i say that i dislike taking care of mold lines and putting them together right but i look back at it and i'm like you know i really do like that part and it's the detail work that kills me because when i get up to put them all together i prime them and then they just sit in a box for decades <laughs> see that's one of the i try not to prime something uh, very far out. It, it needs to, once it gets primed, it needs to start getting painted, you know. Well, that's the uh, intention. The intention is to paint them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, they don't, they don't get any further than that. The, yeah. <laughs> I know what our intention is, but it's like, realistically, it's like, you know, I've done good. I have, I have painted this year. I have, I have, I'm keeping a spreadsheet of every model that I buy and every model that I paint. And uh, I'm currently, uh, there's only eight models that I have bought this year that I have not painted. Um, But give me one second. I'll put this spreadsheet up. I like numbers. I'm a a numbers (laughs) kind of guy. I used to work with uh, electric engineers and uh, that kind of engineer kind of rubbed off on me, I think. Let me pull this up. Um, uh, I can sympathize. I'm a data analyst, so. You know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me too. So that's all I look at is data all day long. <laughs> so I have, I don't know how loud my wife's uh, headphones are, so she may be hearing some of this important information about how many models I've bought this year. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to start. Is there, is there a whisper mode, right? <laughs> it, yeah. I don't know. She may be hacking into my iCloud account here and finding it out. Okay, so I have... Why do I have quantity? That's weird. Because there are a lot of single models. So I have bought, so far this year, uh, two, seven... Oh, my Lord. That's it. Yeah, I just have boxes. I'll put it this way. I have painted 120 models so far this year. That's a lot. That yeah. is a lot. So, and they're all mine with the exception of, let's say I painted commission work. I've done uh, nine storm casts, some towel. Did, uh, yeah, like 20 of them. So a uh, hundred of these models are mine. So my goal is to have fewer model, unpainted models at the end of the year than I have at the beginning of the year. Uh, so I don't everything think I've painted a hundred models total in my life yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just gotta, you just gotta do it. I mean, that's just yeah. it. Just it. So yeah, I, uh, um, but yeah, as far as models, uh, that I've bought, um, I have like, yeah, five Stormcast paladins and three, uh, Sylvaneth guys that I haven't, you know, they're probably, they're on the table. Actually, I was going to do a YouTube tutorial uh, using those, so kind of holding off on that. So, which version of the Paladins did you do? So the, uh, they're in the box right now. So when I um, protectors, I, two protectors, the best models ever. Sorry, that's my actually my favorite Games Workshop models. Right now I'm, I'm working on a uh, on a set of them right now, or the Protector Paladins with the you, the two the, and two ended spear. So do you know what? Of all the Paladins, that's the only one I have not built yet. I guess because I have the Decimator. That's the uh, axe one, right? Axe, and then the retributors or the hammers. Hammers, yeah, and then and the great maces. Right. 
a pound, uh, a, a decimator also. Yeah. I, whatever. But no, I haven't made any of the protectors. So maybe I will do that. Actually, what I need to do is get a, a squad of whatever, three or five of each of the, like round out everything mm-hmm. that I have. And uh, I think the game store just, ha- they had this on the shelf and I was like, ah, you know what? Let me get that. I was rolling hot. I was rolling hot at the tables that night. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, actually, the, those are my the, the paladin protectors are. Uh, I forgot how much I loved them. Like I had painted them a couple years ago, and I actually was lucky enough that if you go search GW's page, you'll see M Dutcher 25's paladins oh. on there. Okay, <laughs> I'm, lo- I'm looking at the box right now, they, and I like the pose. It's very different. It's very yeah. almost Japanese mm-hmm. kind of martial arts pose. To yeah, it, versus just you a might, barbaric, you know, giant hammer pose. Yeah, I'm kind of in a samurai thing right now. <laughs> I'm yeah. going through a shogun sh- samurai phase. Yeah, <laughs> well, cool. Yeah, well, I'll keep you. I'll keep you posted on on what I do with these paladins. Absolutely. And when the when the YouTube channel is up and running too, even like even if, let's say if it's after the episode comes out, we'll still mention it in an episode and post it on Instagram to to share. So okay, yeah. that it, when it's live, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I I have see I have a YouTube channel now, and I, I've had it for years with just a couple of few things, but I don't. It's under my name, and I don't think I can rebrand it like Smooth Blend Studio. Sure you could. I don't. Yeah. yeah. I did I it. Know. I did it with what you call it. We we have a listening to paint dry has one. I had my own personal YouTube channel, and then we just changed it to listening to paint dry. See, I may have to. Yeah. Do no. That. Okay. Granted, my 16 year old did it for me, but. Oh. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if I give her my social security number and password, could she change, <laughs> could she change it for me? Uh, it's like if I can't I, figure I, it out, I don't if I can't figure it out in like thirty seconds, I just like I can't be done. It's it's impossible. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we had that yeah. conversation about the kids being smarter than us. I don't give them my passwords anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys, you got, I can't believe this is like, so y'all are three hours ahead of me. Yeah, I'm so a, it's like, yeah, it's late there. It's 1120. Oh, you know, we're, uh, we stay up really late. I've already, I've already woke, I've already gone to sleep and like woken up and taken two leaks by this late at night, you know, <laughs> by 1130 at night. So, so what time uh, do you guys, what time do you guys go to work? Well, that's weird. So we're both federal workers. So right, right now, well, um, not, I mean, normally, normally. <laughs> normally, well, he teleworks more than I get to. Um, on regular weeknights, I would not be up this late. I usually go to around go to bed around eight or nine because oh. I wake because okay. I wake up at four a.m. because oh. the military f me over, so yeah. I can't I can't break that cycle. Um, but on my days off or days that I get to telework. Um, I usually stay up until about midnight one and then I just naturally just wake up around six or seven, just enough time to go log into my computer and do my, do my work. Yeah. Uh, See, I, you have, you have a worse commute than I do too, though. My commute is much easier than yours. Yeah. Yeah. We live about 45 minutes apart from each other. Yeah. So I'm about, yeah, on a good, good day, it's a two, about an hour and a half, two hour commute in we're, we're where uh where uh in particular are you at so i live in fredericksburg okay yeah so that's where my daughter grew up i think i've mentioned that my daughter mm-hmm. grew up in fredericksburg yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and i'm in burke virginia which okay. is yeah, near right near fairfax yeah which is kind of everybody seems to know fairfax <laughs> yeah yeah my, well my daughter spent a lot of money there for two semesters <laughs> at george mason <laughs> oh she went to mason yeah yeah so she so went to george I. mason yeah, she That's went how I her. got up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She I grew up. up in South Virginia. Yeah. So right on, right on. No, yeah. The, that commuting stuff, I, d- I don't get it. Oh, I, it's not that I want to. No. <laughs> this is not. This is not planned. Yeah. Uh, Dolores, her headquarters is there at Fort Belvoir. So, yeah, Fort Belvoir. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So yeah, whenever I go up there with her, it's just like, I'm like, this is just crazy. This mm-hmm. is, you know, it's, it's just a different kind of life. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a- actually, I'm really close to Fort Belvoir. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 But uh, no, it's, it's, yeah, especially in this area. I mean, this area is pretty rough. And, you know, when I first moved up here in 91, um, it took two and a half hours max to get home to Virginia Beach. And oh. now I'm lucky if it take if we get five, wow. you know. Yeah. yeah. Just And that Fredericksburg corridor is the worst. That, that, yeah. that actually thank, like, thank us for the piece of crap that's 95 that runs through our freaking uh, yard. I hate that. Yeah. And you know it's 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 the oddest thing because we don't know what causes people just to stop. Maybe they're just so happy to see a sign that says Fredericksburg that they all slow down to stare at it That's because it. <laughs> it, I kid you not, man. I, we we always well we don't do it now. We can look at the map and it's all green, but on during the the normal world, um, it's usually about a three mile stretch and everything stopped. Yeah. And when I oh, drive yeah. through it, can't figure it out. When I'm looking at it, can't figure it out. It's yeah. just right here. So I just say to everybody just wants to chill out and look at all our signs. I, I don't know. <laughs> so I would call it Fred Vegas. Fred Vegas, huh? <laughs> <laughs> too funny, too funny. All right, guys. Hey, uh, if there's anything I can do or help in any way, uh, let me know. And definitely hit me up. Yeah, I mean, if it's, since y'all are working from home, you know, I'll yeah, be Mike, streaming. Or, I, no, you're usually streaming, so I'll be watching that if I'm not trying to uh, save the world and crap. But, um, well, that's, oh, I, that's, <laughs> my job isn't that exciting. Trust me, my job isn't either. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guys, you take care, and hey, best, so much best of luck. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Dan and I would like to thank Joe White from Smooth Blend Studios for joining us today. Follow him on Facebook and Instagram at Smooth Blend Studios. Check, our, uh, check out the show notes for times that he's streaming, although he streams a lot, and he's not quite regular on streaming yet. But once we have all that information, we'll have it up and running. For you, and at some point soon, you'll also he said you'll have a YouTube channel, and we will make sure we announce that on our Instagram feed, which is Listening to Paint Dry, and also you can follow us on Facebook at Listening to Paint Dry. Next time we have a surprise episode because we don't have a clue what we're going to be doing. Flying blind, you know it'll be okay though because you know what? It's the new normal now, right? We got so much going on with kind of staying at home and such. I will say this, Dan: if I've learned anything today, it's that the best way to become a better braver, happier painter is to paint like a child. Until next time. See ya. Listening to Paint Dry with Mike and Dan is a production of LTPDWMD. All rights reserved. No portion of this recording may be used without the express written consent of the host. The music is Death by a Thousand Questions by Springtide. Download from the free music archive on a non-commercial attribution share alike basis. All views and opinions expressed in the show are solely the views and opinions of the person who said them. All celebrity voices, if any, were impersonated and done so poorly. 